it's better. Thank you, Mr. Urban. Senator Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Start with you, Mr. Urban. You mentioned WeChat and WeChat Pay uh, and the role that it plays in moving the, the money around. Can you expound upon that a little bit? So I, I want to talk about WeChat and the example I gave and that it allows for speed and trust within the network. So never in my career with the DEA has a criminal organization had the benefit of an encrypted global network that they could communicate on. And what I mean by trust is U.S. law enforcement does not have the ability to intercept WeChat. We can't wiretap it. So if you compare that to 10, 15 years ago when I ran an undercover money laundering team to attack the black market peso exchange, you could wiretap the network. You can't do that with WeChat. The speed that I talk about and the example I gave earlier in my opening remarks, these transactions or communications happen within a day. It used to take seven to 10 days, but WeChat allows for that speed because it's trusted within the Chinese money laundering network to communicate. They can rely on the person they're speaking with is a person that they can rely on to complete that transaction, where again, the black market peso exchange was mistrusted, and they enforced the movement of money that it would flow through violence. You don't have violence. The Chinese money loaners have absorbed all the risk. But in terms of WeChat, that's an encrypted application that whether it's additional legislation or, 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 or a negotiated strategy within our executive branch of, of, of the government, we need to be able to, to impact WeChat so it's not a benefit to the Chinese money launderers. Thank you very much. That's such an important part of the conversation about how money can move around without any, I mean, total anonymity, total privacy, and a very rock solid system that eludes or evades capture in law enforcement in our country. And I'd love to have a deeper dive into solutions for that as we have a time, have, have an opportunity to talk later on as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Jelly Roll, quick question for you. Uh, as, as you know, uh, your, your family in Charleston, the probes are very close friends of mine. I called them just to say, what, 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 tell me about Jelly Roll. And the one thing they said was that he is authentic, he is sincere, and he speaks about the issues that has impacted his life. Yes, sir. And as a kid who grew up in poverty, I will say that sometimes the unseen and the unheard feel invisible. Mm. And one of the things that you're doing today is you're making visible those who still today feel like because of who they are, where they live, or what they do, they are somehow invisible. The challenge, of course, with drug addiction is it doesn't know a class or a race or a place. Mm. It's everywhere. Can you talk about the fact that, indeed, what we're talking about today impacts across all segments of our society in a devastating way? Senator Scott, thank you. I, I was hoping to share this, so you bringing it up means a lot. I have the opportunity to go sing at dozens of rehab facilities a year and dozens of jails and prisons. Every time we do a show in a city, we go to their local jail or their local rehab and sing songs for them to encourage people. And in rehabs across America, I can tell you with certainty, I have seen everything from governor's children's in the same rehab as kids that have been homeless since they were 12. Mm. I mean, when I tell you that this drug, it has finally reached to the point, like I said, that we used to look at addicts and shame them, but now it's hard to because the rest of the world's finally realizing that the addict is actually their nephew. Mm -hmm. It's their cousin, and they know their cousin was a good person. They know that this isn't the actions of the cousin they know. They know this is the actions of the drugs. Senator Scott, uh, Chairman Brown, I assure you that this touches every single human, white, black, every ethnicity, every race, everywhere in the United States of America, it is touching and, help and hurting people and killing people. And that's why what y'all are doing is so important. It's bringing people together. It's making the unseen, fiends felt seen. The voiceless have a voice, and we can't thank y'all enough for it. Um, thank God that Congress can come together not in a bipartisan way, but in a nonpartisan way to address the issues and the challenges facing Americans all over this country. And I certainly hope that my friends in the House are paying attention today because it not already being law is a travesty. And I certainly hope my colleagues on the other side of the Capitol will take up this fend off fentanyl and get it done. 
Thank you, Senator Scott. That's